Hello everyone, my name is Brian Lapidus and I'm the director of the FP&A practice here at AFP, the Association for Financial Professionals. We have released our guide, Statistics You Need to Know, which is based on the premise that a data-driven world is interpreted and understood through the language of statistics and that currently the software that's out on the market more than ever is putting statistical and data tools at your fingertips. We in finance and as business professionals need to know what tools to use, when to use them, and how to use them appropriately. In this video, I'm going to talk about three very simple statistical ideas that you can put into practice today in order to help understand this language. The first idea is that of fitting a model. This is where you create a model or a formula or a system to describe a set of data. Why do you do this? Because a model that can explain the data set, a historical data set, can be useful in predicting what will happen in the future to a similar set of data. Models do this by creating a relationship between predictors, also known as the independent variables, and outcomes, also known as the dependent variables, but more importantly known as the thing you really want to study. The second idea is the naive forecast. Applying the previous period's actual results to the current period's forecast without adjustment. There are variations that might introduce seasonality, one year prior, or a lag, but what you're trying to go for here is, the, is a no-brainer control group for your forecast. Your sophisticated models should be able to do better than the naive forecast. If not, you're wasting your time. So the naive really is a control group for you to compare against. The third idea is the MAPE, or the Mean Absolute Percentage Error. This is really a fancy way of saying average variance, but it does sound more impressive, don't you think? It's easier to show this on screen than it is to explain in words, so you'll see this in just a second. Okay, let's dive in. This example is really a, a simple example because our goal is to show four different ways of modeling data in order to calculate which one is the best fit curve for that data, which has the lowest MAPE. So to start with, we will have four different modeling, four, four different types of models. The first one we'll use is a moving average. Here we'll calculate this by using the data analysis add-in. We'll calculate, select the moving average, and you see that the input range that we'll use is our historical data. And the output range where we'll put this is over here under the moving average. We'll click OK. And here we have, as you see the calculation, it's simply a simple average of the previous three months. Now, since we don't have three months worth of data, that gives us an error, so we'll conveniently let those go by. The second model that we'll use was put together by the best and brightest finance mind we have here on staff at AFP, our director of training, Binny Dawit. Here, this is simply a stand-in for any of the models that you would be using in your office, which is based on history, inputs from around the organization, operational considerations, calculations, all the other things that you're doing as far as your best practices. Vinny looked at the data we gave him, decided to accept the seasonality and simply add on a 2% growth rate to the prior year. So that becomes our model number two. Model number three is a random number generator and model number four is the naive forecast which simply says give me last year's data and we'll carry that down year over year. Now, the interesting part here is, to, is the calculation of the MAPE itself. Now, remember I said earlier that the MAPE is a fancy way of saying a variance. So we'll start with calculating the variance. Whoop, I forgot to tell you that we actually have last year's actual data. So if the prior year is our test data, the actual data is what we'll be testing, we'll be comparing to. So the variance is our actual data versus the forecast. The error rate that we'll calculate is that variance divided by the actual. And then we'll take the absolute of that error. Why the absolute? Because whether something is 18% above or 18% below forecast, it's still off by 18%. Then we'll take these formulas, we'll copy them down, 
and then we'll add in a sum and an average for the column. This could be useful for other calculations that you're working on. But for us, the MAPE is the average, the mean, of the absolute percentage error. So it's the ab average of these, which could be calculated either by the sum divided by 12, or, as we've done here, simply 24% is the average number. Next, what we'll do is we'll take these columns and copy them over to the other models. Let's widen our screen here and pull back a little bit. And we will copy these formulas over across the other models. And what we have here now are four different models. Let's do a little fact checking here. That looks good. Each with its own individually calculated MAPE. And what you can see is that the moving average at a 24% error rate is actually the best fit model for this data. A couple other things to notice here. Let's just say that we didn't focus on, on the moving average, but we looked at these other ones. The error rates for these are all 36%, 35 The naive forecast is actually equal to or better than the other two models. What this tells us is all the time and the effort we're putting into model two and model three is not, is not even as good as the naive forecast. That tells us that we're not using our time effectively. We should either simply accept the naive forecast or we need to go back to the drawing boards for the models. Thanks for watching and we hope you enjoy the guide and the related webinar.